Welcome to the Crittenden Press March feature for Women in History Month. And like we did last year, we're going to feature some of the uh, women of Crittenden County who have made an impact on this community. And uh, this year's Women in History Month is presented by the Earl C. Clements Job Corps Academy over in Morganfield and Law Offices of Rebecca Johnson. So on behalf of our sponsors, uh, we would like to welcome Brenda Underdown, the historian laureate of Crittenden County and uh, one of the feature writers for the Crittenden Press. She writes every week and has been doing that for how long, Brenda? Since 2002. Gosh, this is the 20th year anniversary. I didn't realize that. Well, yeah, well, another reason to celebrate with Women in History Month. And probably... Um, it was either March or April when I did my first article. Mm -hmm. So 20 years you've been doing that. And uh, you were by trade before you became a, a very famous writer in Crittenden County. You uh, worked for the school district for many years. And we'll, we'll kind of trace some of that. But I want to I start out from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, of course, our Women in History Month feature is all about you know, again, women who have impacted our community, but have impacted the lives of women who have impacted the community as well. And, and that being you with all that you've done for preserving the history uh, of Crittenden County. And, and we so appreciate what you do. But just let's start uh, Brenda Underdown from the very beginning. And uh, you, you told me before we came on the air here that you look so much like your mother. Tell us about your mother. Well... <laughs> My mother was um, Evely, Evely Brantley, and um, of course she married my dad, Billy Travis, and then I was born and raised at Crane. And uh, she was a big influence in my life growing up because she was such a good, kind person and uh, always, always looked on the best of everybody and everything. So she was a, a big influence on my growing up. Mm -hmm. And... Tell us a little bit more about her. What did she do? Was she uh, back in those days probably a stay-at-home mom? She huh? was a stay-at-home mom, and um, Daddy wouldn't have probably wouldn't have let her work if she wanted to, because <laughs> really? it was the generation That's right. where they stayed home and was a homemaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, another reminder of, of a reason to celebrate in March Women in History is also this is the 50th anniversary of Title IX which uh, uh, most of the time Title IX is associated with athletics right. and girls playing sports, but it was so much more. It was, ve it was very broad uh, anti-discrimination uh, uh, federal law against uh, discriminating against sex. So uh, there, were, there were girls uh, back before uh, Title IX that, that couldn't take calculus class, couldn't belong to FFA. And uh, we know how important those things are in the lives of our uh, young ladies today, and sports is too, but uh, it, it somehow just gets narrowed down to that sports deal. But uh, I know Ellie McGowan, uh, who was the president of F FFA here, and uh, has gone on to Murray State University. And I don't know if you've seen her, but she's on commercials now for Murray State. No, I didn't know that. Uh, so very successful uh, young lady from Crittenden County who, who was very instrumental in, in, in for, uh, I won't say, for in FFA. And, of course, they've changed that now. The FFA does not stand for Future Farmers, Farmers. of America. It's just the FFA organization because it's so broad in, in its scope now. But uh, again, back back to your mom. So so dad, uh, it was just part of the culture. It was said, yes, it was. Know. So what did, did mom? I guess she dressed you up every Sunday and, and drug you to church. Oh, we or did, did or did you go along willingly? I went along willingly, <laughs> yeah. and that was the, the great thing about living in Crane, where I did. We walked to church because we mm -hmm. uh, went to the Cumberland Presbyterian, which was right across the street next to the school. So we we was there when the doors were open. Mm -hmm. And I. I assume you went Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening. Uh huh. Uh, because we had prayer meeting, prayer. we call it prayer meeting right. then. And uh, um, I played the piano for him some. When did you start? How, what age did you start doing? I that? was in the fourth grade, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old I would have been then. What, ten, eleven, something yeah. like that? So you would have been an old fourth grader probably. Oh, if that yeah. <laughs> I, I think. I mean, I would think fourth graders would be what nine, maybe yeah, okay. eight or nine. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
you also walked to school. I well, guess. yes, it was right across from where I lived, and so I was. We were able to. Me and my brother were able to just walk across the road to the school. And your school teacher, uh, I assume it was a female. Yes, uh, Miss uh, Mildred Paris was my first through third grade teacher, so she was a big influence in my life too. Uh, in what regard was she an influence? Um, Just because she taught you how to read and write, yes, and, and do the arithmetic, <laughs> yes. and yeah. What What else? What do you remember about her? Was she a stern woman? Was she gentle? I just remember her, her being kind and. And having patience with all of us, because mm -hmm. see, she had one through th one through three grades in mm -hmm. her her room. Mm -hmm. And then you had another room with that was next... in the little brick room, and then um, up, we called it the big school. It ha it had uh, four through six in one room, and then in the other room it had seven and eight. Mm -hmm. so, and then w when you left the eighth grade in those small county schools then you would come to the to at that time Crittenden County High School I think Crittenden County High School actually started what 51 uh -huh. or 52 it's 51 I think. a lot of people get that mixed up with the consolidation of Marion High School in Crittenden County which was in 1957 Seven. yeah so uh, 1951 52 was the first year for the mm -hmm. county school and, and that's uh, before that. I guess if you were out in the country, you had to go to Marion High School. Um, they closed Crane School in 1962, and they they bust the kids there. I think you know Francis was still open, uh -huh. and Marion was still open. So depending on where you live, to where they bust you. But I was already out by then. But I just remember that happening. Mm -hmm. I'll take just a moment to. Uh, Again, remind you of, of those who are presenting this uh, for us today, our partners in uh, our Women in History Month, the Earl C. Clements Job Corps Academy, and it's seeking employees. It offers a competitive salary, benefits package, and advancement opportunities, and they're looking for full and part-time uh, employees, uh, and they uh, are an equal opportunity employer. And you can check out their openings at the Crittenden Press online. And also the law offices of Rebecca Johnson, who was featured here last year in the Women in History uh, Month. And uh, Rebecca Johnson, for over 30 years, has been uh, uh, offering experience and trusted uh, advice here in the community regarding estate planning, inheritance, tax planning, powers of attorney, living wills, irrevocable and revocable trusts, Medicaid qualification, prenuptial agreements, estate administration, filing of probate documents, and more. Rebecca Johnson's law firm at 217 West Double Street in Marion. And those prenuptial agreements probably didn't work very well back in the in the day, did they, Brenda? Did you when not, did you ever hear of that? I start to say, I don't, not till just the last 10 years, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, this, it just it, wasn't part of it. Women just, just did not have the, the rights either by law or culture or societal so, value, the, you know, the way that they were treated. And, and not that they were perhaps treated bad in the sense they probably at the time didn't realize no. they were missing what, of course, women's suffrage, you know, women uh, not too much older than you, I'm not going to tell your age, but not too <laughs> much older, uh, were, were born before women were even allowed to vote, which was 1920, I think. I was, didn't read 1920, I believe, was uh, when, uh, that was the, what, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, I believe. So, uh, you know, there are a, a good number of folks still alive today, yeah. maybe that wasn't old enough to vote when that happens because it yeah. happened because that would make them what 118 <laughs> that's what i was thinking they'd be yeah. 100 years yeah. old yeah yeah 120 i think right well now. and and for for that matter divorce wasn't all that prevalent uh -huh. as it is today either i mean you know it, it's changed too mm -hmm. it's just much more common which you know some of those some of the values i think that we had years ago that that we have lost uh, certainly protected the family structure much but, more. Uh, it may it may have may have left uh, some misery with the uh, yes. one spouse or both, but it did. Uh, the, I think the children benefited. That's it, one of the problems, don't you think? That we have yes. There? Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little more about about mom and uh, what uh, uh, you know. Did she after you were gone from the nest? You had some. I know you had at least one brother. I had one brother. Yeah. 
and and he was named after your father, mm -hmm. and he was a, a wildlife biology. I mean, a, a wildlife officer, right? He was for a while, yeah. and but in but then he, after he um, got out of that, he still always loved it. He did taxidermistry yeah. for a while and made um, silver and turquoise jewelry for a while. You know, I think I've told you he made. I have a letter opener. It's in my office uh, up front, and. Uh, I just really cherish it. It's the, a beautiful piece that he made out of a deer horn. Deer, yeah. And he, well, and I I think he made made you um, something out of bear claws too, because his jewelry shop was called Bear Claw Shop, mm -hmm. and he made you a belt buckle, I believe, that had a bear claw on it, because I remember bringing it to you. But he did that for a while. You know, if I did, I don't know what I've done with it. Uh -oh. I do not remember. I, re I, mean, I still had. You sure it was me? Mm -hmm. Well, I've got to go look for that because I, I believe I would like to have my bear claw belt buckle back. Uh, and my, my dad was uh, Billy Travis, and of course he he was in the floor spar uh, business for years. He he worked the uh, the upper ground part, we'll called the flotation mill, uh -huh. and uh, he worked for. Um, Two, two or three of the different uh, floor spar meals at Mexico and Francis. Okay. Uh, now tell me, you in your columns in the Crittenden Press refer quite often uh, uh, to Bell's Mines area yes. as being a kind of a, a homestead or some of your That's homeland. where the, the Travis, where Daddy's Travis's um, lived. Uh -huh. The Bells Mines Church. I had a great grandfather that was pastor there, and a grandfather that was pastor there, and both of them, at one time, were school teachers there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the Travis uh, families buried there at Bells Mines Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Of course, the church is gone. Now. It's gone. That w that's what inspired me to do that first column that year. About that's what got you into writing yes, about that, history. Uh, with with much prompting from you, much <laughs> coaxing from you, that's what made me do my first article. They had uh, burnt the building that year. In January of 2002, they they burnt that building. And, and it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and no. then at Crane, they uh, had the dedication of the the new building, the new Crane, um, it was U.S. Presbyterian Church then that had been damaged in the tornado. tornado. Yeah. So I put, that's, I had an, the losing of one in the beginning of another one. Yeah. So the back to the Bell's Mine Church, I, I think I remember going out there at least a couple of times before it was uh, raised, burned, torn down, whatever. Uh, they were having trouble with people getting in there yeah. and damaging, and, and I think they were some illicit activity going meth on. Meth lab. In the, meth lab, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I, I remember being... So is that why they said, all right, we're just going to do away with this yes, building? Yes, uh, and people shame. had started breaking in it and stealing, you know, the things that were left in mm. it, like the... Well, there was just... There wasn't a lot left in it, but they uh, the carpet off of the pulpit and just different things mm. like that. Of course, uh, it's it was in a very very remote area. In fact, that area now is a wildlife yes, management it, area. Yes, it is. And you know, I think it, it to to a great degree that will preserve that area I do in, too. in a pristine fashion for many years to come. I do too. Do you, do you go out there and wander around? I I just usually go to to where the church said and then wander around in the old cemetery. Yeah, it's it's kind of. Uh, interesting there are people who enjoy visiting cemeteries and it may sound morbid to people but i'm one of those oh, I'm I love a, them. a history buff i love and, them and, you know I, I wish more tombstones had uh had some writing on them or, or the, i like the photographs where you, oh some yes of the old old time guys and women you see on there and uh it's, it just kind of gives you a glimpse into those people's lives. I think it does too. Each of those stones has a history of its own. I agree. Yeah. So when when exactly did you become interested in history? That was um, such a shame. I know everybody says this at one time in their life where they waited till it was too late to ask mm -hmm. your parents and grandparents about things you wanted to know. But um, it was 1980. And what got me interested in it is um, Eric LaRue was the high school teacher, and one of the projects he had his uh, students to do was do a small genealogy chart of their family. 
Well, both my my children, Tina and Steve, had to do one. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I helped them with it, and it just sparked something in me that, that got my interest in it. Well, the genealogy was the first step. But when I started looking at the obituaries and things on the microfilm reader at the Crittenden Press, mm -hmm. I got to see an article that my grandfather had wrote because he was county judge two terms, and he was county superintendent for... And what was his name? Ewell Jeffrey Travis. Okay. And he wrote, he loved history, and he wrote articles about... Well, he wrote the uh, Bell's Mines article and uh, some uh, of the people that lived out there. He wrote biographies about them, and that got me interested in the history part. Mm -hmm. Well, then I started looking for items that contained, I mean, pertained to Bell's Mines and, uh, you know, Dykesburg, Tulu, these little counties, communities and stuff, and I just got hooked. And then 10 years later, you start writing about it, and the rest is history, so to speak. <laughs> and I, I don't know if people know this or not, but it's Chris Evans is the one that, that, <laughs> that got me started in it because well, he would come to the library on Saturday, I think, to get tapes. When you were going places, you'd get those audio tapes. That I think and, that's what that you and would, I, I think I did a little research over there that I could get my hands on when I was writing one of my books. Okay. Yeah. Well, he would see me every week at that microfilm reader, and he, he kept telling me, you need to write a history article. Well, I kept putting it off and putting it off until, I said, like I said, the, the incidents with the churches, and that was my first one, and yeah. it just went on from well, there. Well, thank God for that guy that <laughs> pestered the fire out of you at the library. And, well, it, yeah, it's, it was you. I was able to talk you into And you it. even named my column. I did. You named my column. Forgotten Passages. Forgotten Passages. Okay. Well, you have a blog as well. Oh, I do. I have a blog with all kinds of history yeah. items if, on it. If, if you enjoy what Brenda does in the Crittenden <laughs> Press every week, go to that blog because it's, you know, we have an inf a finite amount of space in the newspaper. We can only give her a page a week. <laughs> Which and people love it, by the way, and, but online it's it's infinite what you can write, and and there's all sorts of uh, pictures yes. and stuff on, and I refer to it quite often oh, well, good. when I'm writing articles on something. I think, you know, when when was that building built? First place <laughs> I go is search your well, your good. blog, and and a lot most of the time I find it. Oh, that's yeah, good. I know it, it's a wonderful resource for people who are uh, interested in history. And then there's also online uh, one of those uh, i think most communities have this if you grew up in Crittenden county now do you do you do you you you, tell, you you administer that mm -hmm. page and and i know I, I see it from time to time and i, I love what looking at the one from my hometown in tennessee it just brings back so many memories it, it does and you get to engage with other people mm -hmm. yeah. and you learn stuff too because they come in on your pictures they come in on my pictures that i post so i get information from them too mm -hmm. now this week i've got um, I've got one on there of the Nichols, um, Runyon Nichols Sugar Light building up here where Johnson's Furniture is now. And then I've got a, a picture of the old uh, Crittenden, Crittenden Motors Company that burnt in 1980. Mm -hmm. And people have really been enjoying that too. Yeah, it's an unbelievable the number of new automobile car show sales rooms, showrooms, whatever. Uh, dealerships mm -hmm. that we had in, in, in the, what, 50s and 60s. We had five at one, five time. At one time. Five at one time. Yeah, and, and now uh, you're lucky if you can find an alternator somewhere. <laughs> <That's for you. laughs> yeah. uh, again, I want to take just a moment to uh, really send a word of appreciation to uh, our partners in uh, this Women in History Month. Uh, it's, it means so much for us to be able to, to share these stories with the community, and uh, our partners are so much part of that. That's the Earl C. Clements Job Corps Academy over in Morganfield, and they're always seeking in, uh, new employees, part-time, full-time, substitute positions are available, uh, as then also uh, law offices of Rebecca Johnson. Uh, she's been practicing here over 30 years, and uh, from estate planning, at inheritance tax, living wills, Medicaid qualifications, uh, state administration, much, much more. Uh, Rebecca Johnson is on West Belleville Street. Brenda, you mentioned just a moment ago uh, your children 
and uh, I want you to talk just a little bit about them. They're both stars in their own right. Of course, uh, I say yeah, that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every mother knows Ever. their children are the greatest <laughs> in the world. But, they do. But Steve, we featured him back a few months ago as uh, one of the uh, snow fighters. Right. He works for the state. State Highway Department. Yeah, and uh, boy, he, he goes at it pretty hard this time of year, doesn't he? They do. Yeah. They they do they they put in long hours. I don't um, I don't think everybody realizes the mm. the time that they put in to try to keep the roads clear. And they don't always look like they've been out on them, but um, but they cover them. Well, I know uh, what was it? I guess what's today? Today's Friday when we're uh, actually taping this. So uh, on Wednesday of this week, we had the ice that came in, and the next morning I woke up and uh, it was pretty well gone off the main road. They, so they worked at, all night. Yeah. The, uh, some of them went in at seven that night and, wor and worked till seven the next morning. Yeah, yeah. That's and, a, and it's a, just a thankless job, it's isn't just it? A People don't appreciate it, right? And, and then they want to uh, complain Compl when it's not uh, uh, just to perfection. But uh, that's human nature. But they're they're there working for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we appreciate uh, Steve Underdown and all those folks over at the uh, highway department in the county and the city. In the county, crews. yes, they, they, they work the too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and your daughter is quite successful. Tell us about where she's at. Okay, she, what's her, her, name? her name is Tina Laurie now. Yeah, she doesn't live here. So. No, she lives in St. Louis. Yeah. And uh, um, just recently, she was made chief underwriter for the PGIM FH, FHA lending business in St. Louis. Okay, so, so she's in the home loan. Home loan business. thing. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I really don't understand all she does, but uh -huh. but she's a chief underwriter for the loans. Uh -huh. And she does quite a bit of traveling around the United States for her business, for her job, too. Are you a grandmother? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. How many grandchildren do you have? Three. Three. I should know that, but I didn't. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I should know. And uh, I'll be a, be a great-grandmother in June. Oh. One of the... That's wonderful. Yeah. Do you get to see them No. Yeah. No, I sure don't. Yeah. Missed all their growing up years. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that's a good segue back to your growing up years. I, I believe we, we kind of, we, we're chasing rabbits <laughs> down other, other trails from time to time, but that's okay too. Uh, tell, tell me a little more. You, you were in high school in the sixties and then you got out of school. Did you, now did you go right into work for the school district or do it seems like you told me you was in a business in an office somewhere at one time. Am I wrong it, on that? It's too low. I, but I mean in another sector other than education. Were you? Did you work in an office in town? No, I worked for um, Sears, Sears for filling and English when they had Sears. I think that's what I remember. Okay, yeah. I, I, I was I thinking worked, down in that area, it was in my mind. Of I worked Street, for them yeah. for, for several years uh, when and, they was on Carlisle Street and then when they moved up on Main Street. And then you got into the school district and you was with uh, uh, the administrative area of the school district, the office. Uh, when, when I first started out in uh, 1972, I, I was the secretary at Tulu mm -hmm. and I was down there until 1980. And then they had an opening um, at the central office for uh, the federal program secretary and I took that. And then I worked there for a year and then when our new elementary school opened in 1981, I was privileged to be asked to be the receptionist out there, mm -hmm. and Mary LaFan was the secretary and treasurer, mm -hmm. and I stayed with them till '93, and then from '93 to 2004, I worked at the central office. The board office. So I was, I consider myself so fortunate to have had those 32 years in the with the board of education. Uh -huh. it, during that time, it was a wonderful place to work. Tell me about some of the women that you encountered there, whether they be with the district or outside of it, that, that you really admired what they did and how they went about it. Um, when I worked at, um, at Tulu, I worked with Miss Anna Hayes Shear, and um, I, she was a wonderful person to, to work for. She um, loved, loved the kids, and she taught, you know, all the basic good things that, reading, writing, arithmetic, and then she was also, when, when recess and lunchtime came, she was always right out there on the playground 
you know, standing back and watching for her, she was right in there with them. Mm -hmm. And I just, and my, both my kids loved her. She was good for them. So she, she was a... Uh, now, did, uh, they went to school at Tulu? They went to school there? at Tulu. And, uh, but did you live in that district down there at the time, or did they just ride with you down No, I lived, we lived in that yeah. district because I lived on that Jane Tabernacle Road. Out at the farm mm -hmm. that you all had. So yeah. we lived in that district. Yeah. Uh, who, who else? Any and, and then uh, when I worked um, at the elementary school, Miss um, Sylvia Thurman was my boss for oh, yeah. several years till I changed positions, and she was a wonderful lady, too. Very well thought of, yes. respected, and was in education for many years. Was the principal at the at the elementary school? Uh, in fact, I think every principal of the elementary school since her has been a woman. They have, yeah, they have. Uh, but I, she I was know Melissa Jones Tabor, Tabor, and then after that was uh, uh, Gil. Ms. I, don't was, I don't remember. So I lost. Of course, her. yeah, I, I believe she was for a, for a time, and then she's moved over into another capacity, and then uh, uh, Riley, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Riley's, Riley's there, yes, there now, and of course the school district here has had two women superintendents Candidates. over the years, and you worked under the first one, uh, uh, Frederica Hargis, which. Uh, Kind of some controversial time uh, when she was here. Yes, it, uh, it was. It didn't, didn't end real well. But uh, then uh, we had uh, uh, Miss Yarbrough, who came over from, from Webster County. And, boy, has she done quite well. And she's she, working uh, with the education uh, uh, commissioner now, commissioner of education. She was... Um, she was really interested in, Miss um, Yarbrough was really interested in the county too. I know she made uh, several trips to the, her and Phyllis Orr made several trips to the History Museum to see the history of the county. Mm -hmm. And then she asked me to help with the history of the old schools mm -hmm. that I think, I think they're still pictured on one of the walls in, at the Rocket Arena. Right. In the entrance part, I think. I think they've moved them, to oh, okay. be honest with you. I believe they're in a the library now. Oh, okay. Well, I helped do those, and that yeah. was, was Miss Yarbrough that wanted that done. She thought it would be good to feature those old county schools, rural schools. Yeah, she was uh, She was great. She was she a great was. educator. I, was, she was, I thought so, too. Yeah, very intended. And, and uh, for obvious reasons, has been very successful so, since she's gone on from here. Of course, any, anybody that seems interested in our local history, you know, gets my vote. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> and you were telling me also about a teacher you had at oh. Crane. Did we talk about her? No. I, I'd like to just yes, for a minute. Yes, go right ahead. Um, it, this this kind of sounds like I might be self pitying myself, but <laughs> that's okay. We okay, can do okay, that. Can... If you admit your sins, you can be forgiven. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, when I was in the seventh and the eighth grade. It crying. I was chubby. I had freckles. You were chubby. You're such a. I was chubby. Oh, really? So and, there's hope for. The, oh. the <laughs> if if that's a problem with you, it it was um, because I got negativity on that. ridiculed for it. Yeah. You know, till I hated school there for a while, really? and I had freckles. Another thing, most kids didn't have, and then I had glasses, so I was four eyes. <laughs> so I was miserable. And my seventh and eighth grade teacher, Miss Annabelle Alexander, uh -huh. was a godsend to me. She changed my whole life. <laughs> now, I'm going to I'm going to chase a rabbit real quick. But now she is Sarah, Sarah Ford's, Ford's okay, mother. great. We're going to have Sarah Ford on this same uh, program uh, pretty soon. So good. Oh, that, that's interesting. She um, and she was um, Miss Annabelle. Loved both the, the boys and the girls. She did things for both of us. But with me, she had me in 4-H. She got me interested in 4-H. And through her working with me, I lost weight. And um, she got me to do demonstrations and, and things in front of a, you know, a group where I got where I wasn't afraid to be stand up in front of people. Yeah. And then, like I said, she's the one that, that uh, nominated me to be most likely, most to, likely succeed. to succeed. So, so most <laughs> likely to see, succeed from Crane School in what year? 
That would have been uh, 58. Yeah, and obviously you've succeeded. Uh, you, you, you're right for the Crittenden Press now, for goodness sakes. I mean, how, how high can you get? Well, that's Brenda? right. <laughs> but I give, I give Miss Annabelle Alexander so much credit for changing my life around during that's, those two years. That's a wonderful made, story. Made me feel like I was somebody, you uh -huh. know. Not some little fat chubby girl that the boys called fatty and four. <laughs> well, I'm su surprised you haven't tried to get those guys back. Or maybe you have, uh, you know, uh, in, in a very clandestine way. <laughs> like, I'm not so sure you, yeah, you write them, write them down <laughs> yeah. a little bit and get them back. But, but uh, she definitely hit me. You know, Brenda, we've gone... Uh, for about 30 minutes oh now, I know Sorry. time flies, but I tell you what, I want to take on the last segment here, I really want to uh, ask you a couple of questions that are just really on about how you're writing for the newspaper and your histor historical work with the museum. I know you, you do that. Uh, you're, you're very instrumental in the, uh, the uh, Crittenden County uh, Historical Museum. Uh, how many hours a week do you think you devote <laughs> now uh, to to your retired life, uh, to to history or something in the community has to do with it. Whether it's writing your column or that, how many hours? It's I, f I figured it up uh, figured it up one time, but um, it it just sounds so unbelievable when I say it out loud. <laughs> it's it's near 50, 50, 55 hours a week that I put in on it. Because on my research, sometimes on some of my articles that I do, it'll and it may just be me, but it'll take me six or seven hours to, to research a subject before I, I feel comfortable with writing about it. Well, it sounds like you need to ask for a raise. No. <laughs> I enjoy it. I love the research of it. I love researching. Well, we, we as a community love you and love well. what you've done and... And it just helps keep, you know, they always, I've, well, I've heard for years that, you know, for, for a community to really be whole, it has to be, it has to understand its past and be proud of it. And you be allow proud. us to do that. And, and that, it, that is so important. But also something I want to, to ask you about is fan mail. Fan mail and requests, because I know I get I get a good bit of fan mail here <laughs> so at the nice. press that we send to you. So talk a little bit about that, and, and you know I know I'm sure you get constant requests, and how do you deal with all those? Well, if if there's any way possible, I find what they want to know. There's some more when some of my time goes is looking mm -hmm. up stuff for other people that ask me, because I um I'm also administrator of. Uh, Critton County Genealogy Facebook page, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of requests on that too. And, and I always try to answer them if I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And if I can't, I'll try to point them to somebody that can. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten a request that was just really off the charts, just like, <laughs> you know, or maybe somebody, you know, my great great grandmother was. Uh, you know, murdered by somebody, and you're, you're, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things like that out there. I, I have. I've got several of them, and um, thanks to the archives of the Crittenden Press, mm -hmm. I've been able to help them because it would be written up in those mm -hmm. old press articles, and I was able to look them up and give them the history of what they wanted. And, you know, you and I have talked about this before, but I feel like here at the Crittenden Press, we're writing the history of the community yes. just a week at a time yes. and, and chronicling that and archiving it for history. And, and so that brings me to my next question. Oh. Where do you do most of your research? Do you do it at home on your computer? You go to the library? You do it at the museum? I see you everywhere. So When I first started, I had to do all of it at the library in the courthouse. It's went around to all the different courthouses mm -hmm. in the county, but... Um, Things have changed, as we've talked about before, and I can do I can do most all of it from my home computer. Yeah. Because you know, Chronicling America, you know, that newspaper site, That's right. and uh, I got Ancestry, mm -hmm. and then Google brings up lots of things. Uh -huh. So I get I can I can do a lot. I can do a whole day's research just sitting in front of my computer. And uh, so this remote 
working is it suits you just fine. Uh huh. You'd rather do that than be at the library where people like me come in pester you no, to write articles no. and give, give you more to do, right? <laughs> I, do, I just like being able to be home in winter weather. Yeah. And otherwise, I, I love being up to at the library yeah. with the microfilm reader and the old microfilm and all the books on the shelves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, well, speaking of the library and Women in History Month, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we really have uh, a, an outstanding library. Oh, outstanding. Brandy Ledford put together that program, the uh, uh, Outlaws Tour. Yeah, Outlaw Tour. Out Ohio River Outlaw Tour. Which is back in the fall and uh, just an incredible program. Anyone who missed that missed out. Uh, so kudos to Brandy. Yes, kudos to Brandy. Yes, has a great impact. Uh, having still having a great impact. She, she is on the community, and most most people don't realize that Brandy uh, is just from across the river over it's in Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois, and uh, she's married to the city administrator, and that's how they ended up over here. But uh, great job. I think she likes being here because she's close to her family now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bet. So uh, again, so so happy to have Brenda here to start off our series this uh, March of 2022 uh, for Women in History Month, and uh, most likely to succeed most likely at Crane School, <laughs> Brenda Underdown, and uh, how successful, gosh, has she been? And uh, she brings so much joy to uh, many of us in Crittenden County with her articles and her. Uh, her stuff that she does on social media, the blog, and, and the museum, and uh, again, she just spends uh, pretty well. Your sounds like your whole uh, whole life is dedicated mm -hmm. to it now. Uh, but I, I love it, and it's just it's just fun to do. Yeah, well, uh, we're very happy to have you, and we're Thank happy to you. have uh, those who've presented this. Uh, uh, Women in History program, the Earl C. Clements Job Corps Academy over in uh, Morgan Field, and it's uh, always seeking employees. So uh, give them a uh, give them a shout if you're looking uh, for employment. Uh, that's uh, they have sal uh, competitive salary benefits package and uh, advancement opportunities. That's for full and part time and substitute positions uh, for teachers and uh, also administrative and office type help as well. And then uh, Rebecca Johnson, the law offices of attorney Rebecca Johnson here in Marion for more than 30 years. Uh, she has been a trusted uh, advisor here for estate planning, inheritance tax planning, powers of attorney, living will directives, irrevocable and revocable trusts, Medicaid qualification, prenuptial agreements, estate administration, and filing of probate documents. That's Rebecca Johnson on West Belleville Street in Marion. She's a local attorney and was featured last year, as That's we said. Great. Uh, another great woman in Marion and Crittenden County. And uh, Brenda, again, thank you so thank, much. And Thank uh, you for having we'll, me. We'll be anxious to see what's in the Crittenden Press Keep this week. Keep watching the Crittenden Press. Brenda. All right, thank you. <laughs>